In this video, we are going to learn about random walk model, popularly known as RWM, and we need we are going to understand how it is an infinite memory process. We are also going to see that how a random walk process can be converted into stationary, and then we'll understand the concept of difference stationary process, and we are also going to understand the unit root problem. So let's first take a look at random walk model. The equation of random walk model is y t equal to y t minus one plus error term. Here, the error term is expected to be following a normal distribution with mean zero and variance whatever. So essentially, what you need to understand that the each term is related with the last term plus error term. So in a way, what we are saying, y one is linked with y zero. And plus one error term. And if you look at y two, y two will be linked with y one and error term. But y one is linked with y zero. And if you replace y one by y zero plus u one, you get y two equal to y zero plus u one and u two. What you need to understand in one k in a way, y two has all the error terms, two error terms, plus y zero the starting value. If you take a look at y three. Y3 will be Y2 plus U3, very similar. Y2 equal to Y3 minus one. Y3 equal to Y2. Y2 is the just last term plus error term. But if you replace this particular value of Y2, you get Y0 plus U1, U2, U3. So in a way, Y3 has three error terms. Y2 has two error terms. So in a nutshell, Y2 will have two error terms. The problem with this particular equation is not its mean, you know, because each term it's expected to be moving, uh, hovering around zero. I'll just keep it, uh, you know, like basic. You know, the problem is not with the mean. Each term is expected to hover around zero. So essentially, the moment you take the average, you know the mean is expected to be around, you know each term will hover around zero. So essentially, when you take the mean, the mean is going to be very much the same as y zero. However, the variance is t into sigma square. So essentially, if one error term has sigma square error, here you know when you go to the t terms, t term has t. Actually, t sigma square. You know, if you have y two has two error terms, y three has three error terms, y t will have t error terms, and hence the variance that it can take. You know, its summation of all these, which is t sigma square. Let's take a look at the Excel demo, and then we'll uh, recap several of the properties of. Uh, so first, let's take a look at uh, you know the equation. The equation says, you know, this equation is like, you know, we had taken just a starting value. We had taken starting value zero plus normal distribution. Okay. Before we understand this thing, first understand that we had generated normal distribution with, you know, around zero and standard deviation one. To generate normal distribution, you can't use the rand function. What you need to do, you need to go to the file. You know, an option, and click on the add-in, and make sure that you have the Excel add-in. You know, of uh, analysis tool pack, analysis tool pack VBA. Once you have that, once, and then if you go to the data tab, you get data analysis tab. Here you need to click on random number generator, and once you click on OK, what I have told, give me 28 series, and in each series there should be 99 numbers because I have gone to 99 rows. I had asked for a normal distribution number with mean zero and standard deviation one, and I had given the output range B five, you know B five to A C one zero three. If you take a look, these are five to one zero three is ninety nine rows, and B to A C is essentially twenty eight columns. So that's what I have given, and the moment you give, it generates set of random numbers. It will ask override. I'm just saying, okay, just override. So it will generate the random number in this range, you know. So it has done that. I'll just do some. Okay, let me now come here. 
Now in this equation this is linked with the starting value and the random term. So, this is the first line. The second line you know is linked with the first line you know plus root is 2. Root is 2 right now we have put uh, let me put it 1 you know just to show you and then we will show you what actually it means. So, essentially it is nothing but if you look at you know because I have put 1 so you can understand it. It is essentially y 1 is equal to y 0 b 5 is y 0 plus you know uh, error term. In this case because this is 1 so you can very well understand in this case you know y 2 is equal to y 1 plus the error term and y 1 similarly like any place you know is essentially the sum equal to the last term plus error term. So, that is how we have generated and now you go and take a look at the average what is happening you know these are 99 numbers we had summed it up we calculated the average and here we had calculated the variance you know like uh, of those 99 numbers. If you take a look at average the average is you know pretty ok you know it is hovering around some particular value you know if you generate another set of random numbers again it will give you another thing but what you can see there is no clear cut trend in this. But if you take a look at variance there is a clear cut trend the variance as was explained you know for t terms it is t sigma square. So, the more the terms their variance is increasing and so the covariance. So, it does not have the properties of the stationary time series right and we can take a look again like suppose if I go and generate another set of random numbers you know and it will just take some time maybe a minute, but it will generate another set of random numbers and let us take a look at what is happening in this series again. You can see that you know the again the average is not does not have a clear cut trend, but the variance has and the covariance has. So, coming back to this slide you know the mean is ok, the problematic term is variance and covariance. Then how do you make it? How do you make it actually like stationary? You know it is simple like you know uh, I will explain you some of the terms and then come back here. But if you just go to the last page and take a look here you know y t equal to y 0 plus u 1 or y t equal to y t minus 1 plus u 2. So, if you take this term this side so y t minus y t minus 1 it will become just error term and the error term by definition hatch 0 mean and clear cut same variance. So, essentially if we start taking the difference of adjacent cells you know adjacent values those values the series will become stationary and that is what we had done here. So, what we had you know we forgot this column because now you are differentiating take a look I have dip minus C 5 minus B 5 you know here D 5 minus C 5. So, when you start taking the difference of the adjacent term by definition because the definition itself has shows the moment you take the difference what you are left with the error term. So, by definition by very much the construct these terms are very much nothing but the random error and now if you take a look at the average the average is very much you know hovering around 0. The variance is very much you know like is not changing over time and same goes to covariance. So, the point that I am trying to say that for a for a random walk model the moment you take the difference of the adjacent term y t minus y t minus 1 the difference the that difference becomes a stationary series. So, the difference is stationary right and that is why you call this series difference stationary series. Also you need to understand one more thing you know I am showing you the variance is changing right. Two things you need to make a note you know all the terms are hovering around 0 0.1 to you know 0 0.6 it has gone back at max to 0 0.1 and below to point minus 0 0.6. Now take a look at that you know if the starting value suppose is 5 you know what happens take a look you know. Now everything has shifted by 5 why because think of you know think of this way you know if y 0 is 5 you know the y 1 is also 5 plus something y 2 is also containing y 0 
so it is 5 plus something you know any term you know if it increases or it goes you know if any term is taking a particular value let us say if y0 all of a sudden increases by say 100 you know 100 whatever was the value you know plus 100 then all the subsequent value you know y y1 y2 y3 till yn you know all the terms increases by 100 suppose if the in the series you know y0 y1 y2 y3 suppose y5 increases by 50 then you know y6 y7 you know all the terms which are coming after y5 increases by that 50 so that's why this process is very much infinite memory once any term is added that terms get added to each and every point and that's why you, you call it infinite memory once any term has gone up all the subsequent term has gone up also what you need to understand the root issue you know in this equation you know you are taking y t minus 1 with 1 you know he, just think of you know it is this this term is y if suppose this term is y2 suppose y0 y1 y2 right if this is y2 then y2 is linked with y1 into c1 that c1 is very much fixed right 1 and the moment this value it is you know the absolute value of this root is which is smaller than 1. So, essentially if you try to put here 5 you know what you realize that this series becomes stationary right just take a look the average is very much hovering around 0 and you know like uh, the variance and covariance also it is very stationary you know very much like fixed. So, the point that I am trying to make you know you know the point that I am trying to make the moment the root is so the root you know by which root is the particular value by which y t is linked with y t minus 1 still the time it is 1 or more you know the series is actually non stationary but the moment you know you put in either direction minus you know or plus the moment it is you know minus or plus but the absolute value is smaller than 1 the series becomes stationary on its own you know and why it happens it is very simple the moment you know the root is smaller than 1 you know the effect dies down over the uh, like you know once you go to the next term to the next term and like that. So, what is happening if you take a look uh, let me just show you what is happening. So, essentially if the, the moment you know the this root if you imagine there is a rho into y t minus 1 which is 1 here the moment it is smaller than 1 say 0 0.5 the effect of y t minus 1 on y 0 is smaller right and that is how the effect goes die down and it becomes a random process. So, to recap the random work process model is a infinite memory process because any term if by chance has increased by some value let us say has increased by 50 all the subsequent terms increases by 50. How do you make it stationary you take the difference of the adjacent term. So, y t minus y t minus 1 and that become makes it very much stationary. What is DSP? When that you know in this y t minus y t minus 1 is a stationary process. So, if the difference is stationary you call it is a DSP process. So, difference is stationary that is what. So, we understood about random walk model and we understood about unit root issue. You know if y t is linked with y t minus 1 by 1 or more the series is non stationary. But the moment y t is linked with y t minus 1 by anything you know where the absolute value is smaller than the one series becomes stationary. Thank you for your time you can uh, subscribe to this this channel so that you can get to the new up to new get to the new updates.